Hello, everyone! Welcome back to the RationalInvestor.com's Broiler Chicken Show! Here it comes, you've all been waiting for it! Actually, it's going to be a different page. Oh, look at that, it's live. All right, anyway. Back, 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 back. <laughs> ah, that's your ad lib uh, intro. One of these days we'll actually have like a formal intro. But hey, uh, we're here to give you the uh, PMA and the value in our analysis and stuff. Who cares about uh, glitzy intros, right? But uh, I have been asked to uh, suggest everybody, if you're watching this, uh, try and help us get up to... Uh, Ah, uh, let's call it uh, what five digits uh, subscribers and followers. I think we're at about seven or eight thousand right now. So uh, every like and every subscription and every notification, of course, helps the uh, Google algorithm. Uh, we share the love, get the word out, and uh, hopefully we teach all of you how to uh, become killer traders because that's the whole point of this exercise, right? So um, PMA for the win. As you can see, I'm looking all shaved and ready for uh, Liam to give him an awesome afternoon. So, of course, uh, remember that, too. As we wind up here through the latter part of the video, I'll be asking for your karmic best wishes. So, uh, me and my boy have an awesome afternoon in the Lower Mainland, driving around, showing him the sights and pretty ladies and all that kind of fun stuff. <laughs> Although, I don't think he really does that stuff, but anyway. So uh, I think what we're, we'll do here is the first half of this show will just be a review. As I said, uh, I actually really like the habit of getting into uh, first thing Sunday morning. I'll pull up a weekly chart, a daily chart, and a four-hour chart. And we'll just go through the levels and sort of what I'm seeing here going forward. Uh, maybe talk a little bit about what the heck's going on in the world. Obviously, lots of stuff with regard to uh, the banking industry. I suppose half of the reason why Bitcoin was built in the first place was because of these crazy banksters and what they do to us. Uh, and ironically enough, I actually think that the banksters were in on building Bitcoin to begin with. Um, as they saw it as an excellent way to shelter themselves from the absolute destruction of the standard of living that they all had planned for us. The Great Reset. You probably heard that once or twice before in your life. So here we are. It's Sunday. Uh, PMA for the win. Uh, also, too, second half of the show, after we do just a quick little sort of overview, is the opportunity to do a little bit of interaction uh ama all that kind of fun stuff as well uh keep in mind the primary purpose of these weekend shows is for me to have the ability to um talk to uh students and um you know it doesn't really matter level one level two level three uh anybody even vets if you have a question of me uh just be sure to pop in i'm sure uh chris probably put the document yeah there it is in the lounge so, uh, you know, feel free to uh, pop in here, uh, fire in some questions. Usually what happens is I'll say that and then uh, site members will as I'm sort of going through the uh, Bitcoin chart and maybe looking at any altcoins or anything that's grabbed my attention or latest news. Um, the, the, I, I come back to this document and we see there are a few questions that have been asked. So. I'm not quite sure how active the uh, level one uh, class is uh, this term. Um, Peter did mention here that uh, level one just finished, so uh, uh, they are done. So hopefully we'll see a few of you guys on this uh, call as well. Um, have we? Yeah, we even put the, uh, oh, there you can see a few people pop in there. There they go. <laughs> They're all getting ready. <laughs> so uh we'll come back to this you guys fill in your questions don't blitz me too hard but what i said there just a moment ago is uh we'll uh we'll first do some uh you know sixty four thousand uh foot view i don't know fifty thousand whatever doesn't matter um of the market and then uh we'll drill down to um uh your specific questions and hopefully you get a pretty good idea of what uh, at least this old gnarly technician uh is seeing in the markets um, you know, <laughs> I have to start off and probably the entire year of 2023 is going to be a reiteration of uh, what I'm looking for through this year 
Uh, you're probably going to hear me uh, constantly making reference to this image uh, through the whole, um, um, basically the, the whole year. And unfortunately, you know, we had a, um, I would argue, a very normal, like if we consider this sort of like uh, this dotted line here up down as maybe the beginning of calendar year. Uh, maybe it was over here. I don't know. That's tough to say. But point here is, I think we had a pretty normal, um, uh, how do we say this? Beginning of every year, there's always new capital that's allocated to the marketplace. Uh, you know, just it, it might just be simply tax uh, related, you know, into the end of the year. There's a huge tax incentive uh, to actually sell losers. So quite often we get very heavy downside pressure uh, into the end of the year. And then that pressure is lifted. Doesn't it's, It doesn't actually necessarily have to be like a whole bunch of new selling or buying comes in. It's just the selling that was being driven by tax uh, related reasons uh, just stops as of December 31st. Uh, you can't claim any more capital losses for the previous tax year. So uh, you actually have this funny little thing. It's called the January effect that uh, where you actually see venture capital, smaller cap stocks, those kind of things. They Because that weight is lifted off its shoulders, all of a sudden it, they just sort of mysteriously lift. Uh, and often that first week, two weeks, three weeks of the year is a fantastic little trade window. And you can bang out a few uh, doubles, just get, you know, your new year uh, going on a really great footing, uh, you know, bank some profits. Uh, you're playing with the market's money now. Uh, but that effect doesn't last too long. <laughs> and once we get into usually about the middle of February, then we... That that um, that sort of incentive uh, for uh, the small caps, um, kind of like the the relieving of the vacuum, if you will, has been relieved. And of course, uh, you know, you guys in crypto, uh, you've seen what's happened with uh, you know uh, artificial intelligence was the big fundamental driver that got prices bid up. Um, and we we joked through the whole rally. Uh, isn't like uh, cryptocurrencies and artificial intelligence like comparing Coca-Cola and the construction industry? And actually, uh, Chris made a really cute little short uh, for uh, Google uh, about that recently. Um, I, I saw it yesterday while I was uh, surfing through uh, YouTube on my television. Um, so uh, pretty much business as usual. I, and I also warned in that video that if you see a particular sector or a particular part of the market rallying, but it's not rallying on news that's directly related to the actual sector or the asset itself, i.e. the market was rallying based on this artificial intelligence stuff, not really on how wonderful cryptocurrencies were and any innovation or any new technology, that's a bit of a warning sign. So, you know, once that sort of uh, January effect wore off, uh, once the sort of that the prices of these AI assets uh, got bid up to substantial levels, even approached overboughtness, um, you probably ought to have uh, maybe cooled your jets a little bit. Good part about what we do at TRI, we we you know drive home day after day after day. I mean, just it's always the message: do not chase, don't chase, don't chase, don't chase. So hopefully we didn't have too many people around TRI going buying the top of the market there because uh, prices are already starting to come off substantially. Um, and I get the impression that we did rally into resistance, whether it be on the Bitcoin chart, that 25,000 pretty big psychological level. Also some technical marks that uh, made sense why it should stall out there. Uh, but also, too, in a lot of the altcoins, uh, especially, like I said, the AI-related ones, uh, pretty substantial rallies. Uh, but now uh, we're starting to work our way back down. And the interesting thing is there was a number of names that I actually want to have on the books. Uh, you know, just FYI, I'm not going to go into it too much in detail here. Uh, but um, we have a fun challenge. Basically, the next generation... 
of uh, little old lady uh, portfolio. Remember, um, and maybe you know this, maybe you don't. In fact, actually, somebody said over the weekend, look at Brian, all you got to do is just tell them you took $500 and turned it into half a million bucks and you'll have people throwing money at you to learn how to trade, <laughs> which I thought was funny. Um, I pinned this tweet up at the very top of my personal Twitter feed because this was my challenge when I first got into this space with you guys was uh, I was doing uh, shows with Coinigy and a guy named Alex Sturk, although I don't really see Alex too much on uh, social media. Oh, what did I do with the damn web page? I got to have it up here so I can at least see you guys. All right, there we are. Hey, I'm still videoing. All right. Um, and the original challenge was, could I take 500 bucks and turn it into 100 Gs? The actual ending number, because it turns out we did liquidate this portfolio entirely, was uh, 374,000. I think that was the ending number. So if we want to maybe tout the idea, we took $500, turned it into 370,000 or whatever the hell the number was. Um, yeah, that's the big sales pitch. So uh, that's what I did in this. Uh, you know, you can see that we hit the the initial objective, 100 Gs. And I even said it publicly on the Quinn G shows. I'm going to take one student's tuition and I will turn it into 100,000. Everybody went, oh, you're crazy, Brian. But hey, I did it. So anyway, the point here is we're going to do it again. Uh, and uh, got uh, quite a crew with us. Bunch of uh, guys that were uh, with us in Portugal. And actually, there's your show director uh, driving the bus in the background. Uh, there's CRI CTO enjoying his Pentecooks. Uh, there is Brian. Jesus, Brian. Nice to pay. Uh, but anyway, taking pictures with chickens. Uh, we, that was a place we uh, looked at in Portugal. Uh, anyway, the point of the matter here is, and you can see on my shopping list, I'm starting to fill my shopping list up here. But everything is, you know, buy on pullbacks, buy at the bottom ends of ranges. Uh, slow and steady wins a race. Don't put too much money into any one idea. Sell halves on doubles when they double in price. Blah, 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 blah. So anyway, uh, we are going to be doing that. And I am actually in there buying assets at the bottom end of the ranges here as prices dump. Uh, does it mean that I'm going to be selling stuff tomorrow? Probably not. Uh, my hunch is, you know, going back to this original conversation that I got going with you guys, is I think uh, for the time being that we're sort of in this phase right here, uh, and, you know, I, I, there is a debate and, you know, it's interesting, uh, talking to other, uh, TAs, uh, uh, especially even some of my previous students and stuff that they actually think that we're in this phase here. I don't know. It's a tough one. It doesn't really matter. The point here is you can kind of see what we got coming in front of us. It's going to be a bit of a slog here. Um, I want to buy lots and lots of these altcoins. And then, of course, when the public goes back into this stupid euphoria, you know, just what we even saw a couple weeks ago, things were getting a little bit nuts over there. Uh, then I'll be selling abs on doubles, triples, quadruples, whatever. Um, and, uh, and actually, interesting, uh, there's still assets that are basically right up in that double area that uh, I probably should have at least uh, sell have on double orders working. I can think of one in particular uh, that I think is just sitting right up at that double level, the next double level for me. Um, <clears throat> so uh, where are you? Uh, I don't really like to say the name because it's just kind of gross. But <laughs> uh, You all probably know exactly what I'm talking about when I say that. There it is. So, oh, this oh, he's coming off now. Okay, finally, the uh, <laughs> they finally calmed down here a little bit. I was wondering if that thing was going to keep going, but anyway. Um, so, you know, like something like this, uh, I guess I can just show it here. Um, there's no way I could buy that up there. If anything, you know, like I should be selling more. Uh, already, of course, got sold a half on doubles working and all that kind of stuff. And if anything, if it pulls right back down to the bottom, I want to go back and buy it back. In fact, actually, here's a good example of one where we did uh, sell half on a double. Uh, and market rallied all the way up and it's working its way back down. You can see how close I came to actually buying coins back. So this is what I do. In fact, uh, I had even said in a public tweet that, you know, I've actually been buying 
a lot of uh, of crypto down here at the bottom end of the range as uh, prices dump. Uh, just because I wanted the positions on. So I don't think I'm going to go too much more into that today. Uh, just the point being that uh, 2023, it's going to be one of these kind of years in my humble opinion. Um, and if anything, I have to force myself that when everybody starts freaking out in the public and starts dumping... I think I've said this expression to you guys before. I believe pullbacks are buying opportunities. And I still think that way. But I'm not looking to be a big seller here. Even through the calendar year of 23. I would consider the whole calendar year. Unless, of course, they double like I showed you that silly coming new and the F to XS and stuff. I mean, if they double, they double. But uh, I would actually prefer to be on the buy side of this market, not the sell side. But it makes perfect sense because I do exactly opposite to what the public does. And what is the public thinking and feeling and doing right now? <laughs> I mean, they're a little bit stressed right now. So um, my hunch is, is that, uh, um, I, I mean, I'm not going to, like, we'll, we'll look at the actual charts. I don't actually see any quote unquote buy signals per se. Uh, just yet, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we're actually in an area where over the next week or two we actually do see some sort of pivot low come in to set up probably uh, a next counter trend rally uh, trade into the spring. Yeah, you know, like uh, crypto is a funny creature. I mean, typically the expression goes um, buy when it snows, sell when it goes. So that's like typical stock market. Um. Crypto, it actually usually has a nice little rally into uh, late March, early April. And that's what I'm thinking is that probably going to find some sort of bottom here around the Ides of March. Then we rally up into sort of late March, early April. Uh, unfortunately, the FOMC uh, and the banksters and all that, they've kind of had a pattern of late of stopping the bull we'll see that in the price charts in a moment so uh, once we get beyond that i you know i just don't know how much of a rally we're going to see here uh in the near term and we've done some fib cycle studies uh you know fib time cycles and stuff i actually do like the idea that the market probably for especially for crypto probably bottoms like the first or second week of june and of course you know, we always have to take into context what the fundamental backdrop is. And unfortunately, right now, this is a really, really bad fundamental backdrop for crypto. You know, that Sam Bankman Free guy, he really fucked this entire industry. My apologies to uh, YouTube. Uh, if anything, you should allow that profanity because that's exactly what he has done to this industry. One gentleman has absolutely just derailed this whole industry. And it might take years to recover from the damage that this guy has done. So um, I'm not, like I said, I'm not really thinking 2023 is the big year. If anything, we have to get through his trial. We have to throw him in jail. Um, we have to have all the regulators say, okay, fine and done with, it's over. Nobody ever buy crypto again, and they just forget about us. And then we go back to our business. Of course, you know, the classic cliche is uh, Bitcoin usually bottoms uh, about six months ahead of the happening events. We all know that the next happening event is coming up next April. So six months prior to April would be like October. Uh, and that's what I think this window is over here where we have our ultimate capitulation low into this uh, into this fall. Uh, interesting that he uh, we have here on spring. Don't that that's a that's a completely different reference that's to do with uh, Wyckoff. Um, I do like the idea that you know the whole debt ceiling debate crap comes to a head uh, here this fall. I like the idea that maybe we even ha have some sort of nuclear exchange in Ukraine sometime this summer this fall. Uh, I like the idea that we have the ultimate sort of capitulation of the banksters. 
and uh, you know the ultimate sort of play out is SVB right now sort of like the way Bear Stearns was in 2008 and through the whole summer of 2008 it was oh what's gonna happen to Bear Stearns what's gonna happen to Bear Stearns and I'll go watch that uh, big short movie uh, for historical context on that Ultimately, Bear Stearns went under, which started the cascade. Then Lehman went under. Uh, they let Lehman go. Of course, that was a right-wing uh, party. As soon as uh, the election came, of course, they uh, all the socialists came piling in. Too big to fail, blah, 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 blah. All the bailouts started. And, of course, that's when crypto got its start. <laughs> so how ironic. On that anniversary, we'll have another big bailout, probably. Uh, and uh, and that will start the next uh, big crypto leg. But I wouldn't be surprised if these lows are down actually around cost of production uh, for Bitcoin. So just be aware of that, okay? Uh, I think it's important that we just keep coming back to this image. What should 2023 look like? Having said that, <clears throat> if we can get through, like if this is the June pivot here, and we get some sort of bottom uh, cyclically, um, we could have ourselves another sort of just exactly what we just went through, uh, where you might be banging out doubles, triples, quadruples, quintuples. I mean, Jesus, there was one guy on the site, his name's uh, Ilian, and I think he's from uh, Romania. And um, geez, I would just be curious to see how many doubles that guy banged out. I mean, it was stunning. Must It must have easily been uh, double digits, easily. Um, I mean, every bloody day he was showing a different coin on KuCoin going crazy. So the point is, is that, you know, they all, you know I used to work with this one broker guy. He used to always say this. He used to, and it's really, it's common sense, is when it's raining out, is that the time to go out into the fields and harvest your crop? No. The old expression is make hay while the sun is shining. Uh, because the grass is dry, right? And if the grass is wet, you don't want to harvest it because uh, then it'll just rot. So the, the point being that when we're pointing down, probably best just to cool your jets. And of course, if you want to work stink bids, like a la little old lady kind of idea, trying to buy against bottom ends range, take little nibbles. There's nothing wrong with that. But then when we're in that seasonally friendly window, you know, go out and make as much money as you possibly can through the window. Uh, unfortunately, though, we're with that window, I think, just out of the, right out of the gate, the brand new part of the, the year, I think that window uh, is kind of closing here. So anyway, uh, there's your sort of 2023 backdrop. It's probably the best place for us to start these, uh, these uh, weekly shows with you. Uh, and just where are we through the year? as we walk our way and you know look at this chart i mean you see what happens at the end of the year so don't lose focus you know the tax man he's going to try and fuck you the banksters they're going to try and fuck you governments you know biden i think biden wants to like literally double taxes on everybody fucking cocksucker this guy's oh he's like we're going to look back like 20 years from now and go, this Biden guy was like, he was way worse than Trump. <laughs> this Biden guy, he's a nightmare. And the sad part about it is, of course, uh, you know, substitute drama teachers there. I mean, he's no better. I mean, God, he's a nightmare, too. So we are in like the jaws of the socialist communist sort of orgy right now. This is this is, you know, absolutely their absolute. This is this is their time, and they're gonna try and screw us as hard as possible. Uh, us all, small business owner operators, uh, capitalists, speculators, whatever you want to call us. So just don't lose focus. You just gotta you gotta roll with the punches. I mean, don't fight with the tax man. You can't win. So pay your goddamn taxes. But let's just go out and make a whole bunch more money. And then maybe, I don't know, we'll go and move all to the Caribbean or buy our own island or something. Uh, next go around and leave this funny socialist, crazy communist world that we live in. Uh, you all know my story. Uh, I have a special needs son uh, who is part of the system here. Uh, and his annual uh, health bill is rather steep. So if anything, I'm just going to sit and take advantage of the socialist environment and if it, anyway, knock on wood, if it, there's one thing that I can be thankful of is, uh, yeah, guys like me, I can't find a doctor here in Canada. 
but uh, the socialists have not cut off the funding for uh, people like Liam. So thank heavens for that. So I personally don't mind paying ridiculous tax bills. I'll tell you, though, the taxes are just idiotic. But at the same time, too, uh, Liam does drain the system quite a bit. So I don't feel so badly about paying ridiculously high taxes. Um, but, you know, as time goes by, and if you do feel as though you can detach from the system, you know, maybe going and shopping around for, you know, I think uh, Chris found a digital nomad um, situation over there in Europe. So he's trying to get settled into a, a little bit different life for him over there. Uh, actually, uh, FYI, uh, kind of totally off topic. Uh, we are planning on doing a boot camp this spring. Um, eh, we haven't quite figured out the price point, but I think we're probably going to make it something around eh, two or three thousand or something like that, plus accommodation uh, and your travel. So um, probably just going to open that up to uh, actual TRIers. I'll be talking about more about that as we go through. Um, as we go through the daily briefs in the in the weeks ahead. Um, and then interestingly enough, uh, well, okay, we want to talk more about that. Maybe in the in coming episodes I'll give you an update on that. But like I said, that's primarily for TRI, so I'll talk about that through the daily brief. Um, okay, so uh sorry I got off topic there. Let's get back on topic. Let's talk a little bit about what the hell's going on uh in the price charts. As you can actually see from this Wyckoff image, you can kind of see top end of the range, bottom end of the range, you know, these horizontal lines. You know, when we go and look at the price charts, you're going to basically see this pattern. So don't be shocked. So uh, first things first, uh, I like, and of course, you know, we can always talk about the bank in the second part of the show which I think should probably start in about a half an hour or so. We'll talk uh, news. If you have specific questions, I can give you my input. Obviously, I don't have any magic bullet answers, but I've been at this game for 30, 40 years. So I have pretty much an idea of what's going on. And frankly speaking, there's nothing new going on about any of this. It's just that crypto was the sexy hot asset through the fear cycle peak. And on the other side of the fear cycle peak, those assets usually collapse in value. And so now we're seeing the collapse in value and we're seeing the reverberation of that collapse through the entire economy and society. There's nothing new going on here at all. If anything, what's criminal about this is the fact that the banksters are just not being honest with the public. Um, and they really should have been giving a little bit more guidance, you know, after the fact, after the SBFs, after the, F, you know, the Sam Bankman free dickhead, doofus, loser, idiot stuff. Now they're coming out and saying, be careful. Come on. Ah, drives you crazy. Anyway. Okay. So first things first, let's take a look at the weekly chart. Commentary here. Prices fallen into moving average support. Following inside bar reversals, Haramis, which I think is pretty straightforward. And I think we, I even put a tweet out through midweek that I was looking for 13 EMAs to act as support on the weekly price chart. We actually went beyond the 13 EMA, which is a little bit of a surprise to me. But nonetheless, that move beyond the 13 EMA actually took us into bearish uh, price objectives for trade setup so that worked out actually really well bear targets remain trend line support uh inverted <clears throat> head and shoulders levels uh wyckoff checks and brian's favorite fibs 78.6s those would all suggest that maybe we see support around 17,500. So let's see what the heck that means on the charts. So uh, here is that inside bar reversal. This is the concept that we teach uh, in the school program. You know, whether it be uh, low to high trend lines, that's what this uh, green line is that was drawn off a previous load against this high, I think. Or maybe that was uh, this line here. Uh, you know, big psychological levels, 25 Gs. This previous high is a liquidity pool. Julian loves talking about all the liquidity pools. 
<clears throat> and we put out tweets the effect that this was a liquidity pool this one was this one was this one was so not a big surprise that that's what they went after and as soon as they cleaned out the last one the next one is like way up top here so as soon as they cleaned out this one which is starting to get back to sort of technically reasonable levels the market had to pause i think they just ran out of ammunition um so inside bar reversal uh lots of bear divs that were forming through here in fact when we look at the daily chart the amount i think there was something like 10 different bearish confirmed bearish momentum divergences on this move to new highs here it was screaming trouble uh, and of course, you know, I, I don't, I think, believe it or not, I think we actually even had somebody come out and publicly say, this time it's different, we go straight up from here. So like literally, as soon as you hear somebody say, this time it's different, then you know that's probably the end of the move. Uh, anyway, point of the matter here, inside bar reversal, and as I had pointed out, I was expecting the market to slam into this low and the 13 EMA, and maybe start carving out a nice big head and shoulders top. And as you can see, we just went careening through that level, and I actually had to come all the way down to the 30 SMA. What's interesting about this 30 SMA is that 30 weeks SMA is actually very, very similar to a 200 period daily SMA. So you notice, there's 30 SMA on the uh, weekly chart. If we actually pull up the daily chart, you see there is that 200 SMA. Isn't that incredible? So this is one of the reasons why I really like using these particular moving averages is that quite often they just scale up and down. So 30 SMA on the weekly chart was basically your 200 SMA on the daily charts. Regardless, uh, you can see we tagged that and then reversed off of it. Um, I'd also say, too, that, uh, you know, when we look at the daily chart and the four-hour chart, if we just play connect the dots, draw a line from there to there to there, what a big surprise. We slammed into that line, and we'll see it later on, and then we just reversed right off of it. Not really a big surprise. That's what's called a megaphone pattern. And uh, the third tag of a megaphone level actually is a trade location. So not a big surprise, uh, market you can see is actually lifting away from that level. Um, so as we had said here, what are the technical objectives? There is the uh, original trend line off of the bottom. So play connect the dots. The trend line is confirmed on bullish market structure, i.e. this trend line goes from potential to valid and an actual active trend line on the move through this high right here on this big candle here boom so i would actually argue there is your trend for bitcoin price it's really really simple try to keep in mind you know with with technical analysis the simpler you keep this the better off you are don't overthink this stuff i actually see a lot of people they they fall into the trap of overthinking their ta and they end up getting really screwed up and sort of contradicting themselves. And then just, I don't know whether I'm bullish or bearish because they got just too many uh, studies and they overthink this stuff. In fact, uh, an old guy that I used to work with, uh, he used to always say that the biggest danger that he saw in live pit traders was this, uh, he called it uh, paralysis from over analysis <laughs> which i think is actually a beautiful expression it really does uh, typify what often happens to new traders is uh they just they over analyze things and it just gets too complicated so anyway uh just checking in on uh, youtube making sure that the uh, page is working all right i don't think that that's right though uh is that yeah, I guess that's where we are. Why does it have an end time on there? It says 36 minutes and 33 seconds of one hour and 36 minutes. I guess that's my limit. Once we hit that, I better shut the hell up, eh? I've never seen that before. Uh, and Chris is actually the best at using this uh, YouTube. I'm terrible at using this. All right, so uh, there's your primary trend line. Interestingly enough, you know, I'm a big fan of 61.8 fibs. Uh, 
you know, 1.618 is called the golden ratio. A 0.618, uh, lots of pro uh, traders that I used to work with just simply always traded that level. So it shouldn't surprise us. Probably going to see a little bit of play against that 61.8. Wouldn't even be surprised if when, when we get to lower time frame charts, we'll talk about the fact that there's no bullish divergences here yet. So I don't think we've actually hit some sort of pivot low yet uh, or made a bottom yet. And it wouldn't surprise me that what we have to do is tag that 61.8. Uh, that wouldn't surprise me at all. Also, too, what I don't like about this is I would prefer, notice this candle here. Notice how we opened up, went screaming up, and then finished right near the highs of the candle, meaning yeah, we had some pretty pretty good bear, uh, bullish momentum here. And as a result, you see price moved higher. Um, I suppose, you know, we did have uh, big downs uh, here. A little bit of momentum move. Interesting, big down. And actually, next we put in a doji, and that was the bottom. So that was actually a pivot. I don't like when we carve out a huge tail or a huge wick because quite often it means we're probably going to have to go right back down. So notice how this huge tail here, actually I'm not even quite sure, that might not be the best example. But uh, you notice, uh, you know, just even here, this big tail, I don't like that. So as a result, we had to come back down and trade into these levels. This tail here, we had to come back down, trade into those levels. So I would actually prefer that we finish today actually fairly weak and right down at the bottom end of the range. But I don't think we're going to finish the day like that. So they're actually going to crank it back up, which means we probably need to come back down and test these lows again. Um, probably, you could even say we're probably in a moving average sandwich where there probably were like stop loss or even mental stops at this level um and you know probably people if we do actually get that rally up into this level people are going to be like wow awesome i can actually short from the breakdown level so they probably have orders to sell at that level or if they were long they had a mental stop if we go through this low then i will look to exit on any kind of sort of wyckoff check of that level so i wouldn't be surprised 21376 now acts as a pretty stiff uh Resistance to the upside, 13 EMA. If we can finish this candle back above that 21,376, hell, you might just have a huge hammer candle here. And that actually might might even mark the bottom for now. So, yeah, anyway, uh, it is what it is. We'll see how this goes. Right now, let's see if we can get back above this 21,376. I doubt it, but we'll see. Uh, and as I said before, looking for support now. Obviously, this tail low is going to be support. Uh, Mountain Man, and really, ultimately, probably over the next month or so, probably going to have to trade back to this trend line because that is the, the primary trend here, folks. Um, let's see, anything else I said here? Uh, do, 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 do. So, um, BFF inverted head and shoulders so inverted head and shoulders comment this maybe is your left shoulder this is your head and if that's the case shoulder head neckline shoulder we should see this level hold if this level can't hold then that negates the head and shoulders argument um and then that probably suggests that we got to go down, test this low in earnest, and probably trade back down to this level. And if we get actually market structure on the underside of this trend line, that actually sets up a new weekly sell signal, you know, kind of like maybe an inside bar failure or something. Underneath this trend line, that would be a wicked short setup to take us down into this megaphone level. Let's cross that bridge when we come to it. Right now, I think we got a pretty good shot. 17.5, 18, you know, even as high as 19. Let's maybe keep our fingers crossed that we actually see a half decent technical floor come in around this level. So there's your weekly price chart. As you can see, I actually did a FIB time study and this was really interesting. Um, I can just show you the raw chart on its own. It was really cool study that we were kicking around this site. I was really proud of the uh, site members. They're doing such great TA these days. 
So I uh, put out a tweet along these lines. Of course, we have uh, the cycle people all suggesting that this is going to be a pretty tough slog, folks. Uh, just, you know, be prepared. Uh, then we did like a FIB uh, time study. So this was the bottom of the market. This was the initial rally. And then how would sort of price project itself FIB time-wise based off of this initial move? And you got, uh, this was interesting because like 1.618, was basically the floor here, uh, sort of reactionary low. 2.618 was that big, uh, so almost sort of like the beginning of the topping pattern. Interesting how 4.669 was actually the exact opposite side of this topping pattern. And then the next Fib cycle that comes out is way over here, uh, 877 all the way out in sort of the middle of June. Blech. So believe it or not, you know, just as this was sort of like a big topping pattern like that, I wouldn't be surprised if this spends the whole damn time doing something like that. Boo, he says boo. So uh, be prepared. Now, as you can see from this image, there is lots of back and forth through this entire uh Cycle, so it's probably something like that, then like that, then like that, and then like that, you know, something along those lines. Um, so I thought that was an interesting study, and of course, the cycle guys they're not really too optimistic right now either, <laughs> understandably so. Uh, so that's what these uh, um, vertical lines are. So we just went through that time uh, cycle study. And I don't think that the next cycle actually kicks in until the end of May, beginning of June. Slightly off, though. I don't know whether I have the numbers exactly right on this particular chart. Anyway, hopefully you get the idea. And you can kind of see, I mean, does that look like a certain part of a certain type of anatomy? This would be our classic head and shoulders bottom. And if this is the case, and this shoulder does hold uh in here i mean it really wouldn't make a difference we could cycle down into this low against the megaphone and still per pivot the end of may beginning of june that would still make sense to me but um this is going to be the tell as to whether uh we're in that first part of that uh y cough um uh, distribution accumulation pattern or the second part so we'll see how, how we do against these lows that's probably going to happen and maybe following the Fed. Actually, why don't we take a look at the next chart and then maybe you'll understand that. So on the medium time frame, so now we're looking at the daily price chart. What jumped out at me when I looked at this daily chart was, remember, I had said there earlier, look at all these darn divergences. And I love this tool. This, oh, that's what she said. But uh, this uh, MAB div uh, script, whoever wrote this, I think it was a TRI. Every time I pull this up, I always say the exact same things. I think it's a tri -er, But man, what a cool script this, uh, this script is. And it's just like that one plus one equals three. We're all working together to try and you know come up with better uh, decisions, more informed decisions. Um, and... Um, you know, like I teach the concept of TA and uh, and the concept of, of things like divergences. Um, but uh, you computer people, you're so smart. Uh, and it's just beautiful watching you guys, especially with PineScript right now. Hell, they probably use that chat GPT or whatever to actually help them write this script. But look at that. There were 13 bearish divergences up here. We should have been like... Uh, Maybe we better cool our jets, but that's what Brian was saying. <laughs> it's just nobody ever listens to me. Anyway, um, so point of the matter here is not a big surprise. Lots of toppy action in here. There's that, of course, that, uh, like I said, the, uh, the, the low to high trend line that I pointed out on the weekly charts. Then remember we talked about Julian's uh, liquidity hunt. So you can see all of these were just juicy, juicy stops for them to go after. Then also to notice, and this is what concerns me a little bit about the current market state, is notice the market loves to rally into FOMC, 
hey, maybe they're going to be nice to us. Maybe they're not going to be such assholes. Maybe they're going to be okay. May Fuck you. <laughs> right? That's why I'm calling this the F-U-M-C now. <laughs> so, bang. And then, hey, maybe they're going to be nice to us. Maybe, and fuck you. <laughs> and, of course, this doesn't go well for the YouTube uh Gonna stuff. I'm sure they don't like me swearing and stuff, so uh, I'm gonna get into trouble there. But I mean, there's no better way to describe this. These banksters, and I mean, you listen to the banksters right now. They are literally. And uh, Jer Jerry said the other day that he wanted to make sure. Or what was the word term that he used? He's he said want to remove. Everybody in the banking business that is not an actual bank. Think about that, people. Was Is Do Kwan part of that inner circle? Bankster cartel? Do you see what they did to Do Kwan? I think actually what you're seeing out of this SVB is actually exactly what Jerry just said. SVB is not a money center bank that's part of the FUMC cartel. Keep in mind, these people are cartels. I mean, you know how nasty, you know, the OPEC people can be when you uh, uh, don't agree with them, we'll say. Uh, mind you, they don't openly murder people. Mind you, yeah, I guess well, they have a history of that too, don't they? But, uh, you know, the FOMC is just a cartel. That's all it is. Uh, ironically enough, you know, we got problems with cartels in northern Mexico right now. I mean, they're same thing, same shit, different pile. It's just uh, this particular cartel, they all wear suits. And uh, they all have white hair. <laughs> but make no mistake about it. They are definitely, uh, they are definitely, um, uh, they have a history of, uh, they're very nefarious about it. But they took a poke at uh, good old, uh, uh, old Hickory, I think his name was, uh, Jackson. I can't remember. I always forget that president's name. I want to say Andrew Jackson. But I'm not sure if that's the right name. Uh, you know, there's, there's lots of connections between John Wilkes Booth and, uh, and, uh, and the banksters. Um, you know, they, they say that the banksters were, uh, in, uh, in on the deal to remove, uh, Mr. Kennedy. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, there's, there's, uh, connections to the banksters and John Hinckley, if you know who that is. So they're a cartel. I mean, uh, they are in the business right now, of course, of protecting their monopoly. No doubt about it. Uh, um, yeah, and of course, on Chase Connect. <laughs> you know what I found out the other day? I couldn't believe this. Our buddy Jerry is actually part of the Carlisle Group. Does do you, Andre, do you know who the Carlisle Group was founded by? Who is the president and chief Everything of the Carlisle Group? I couldn't believe it when I found out about that. Anyway, back to RTA. So, uh, lots and lots of warnings that there was trouble. Interestingly enough, um, you know, the very first thing that I learned when I was, uh, you know, an aspiring commodities trader 20, 30 years ago, of course, uh, aspiring is probably the best word, but the first thing that I learned was the 50% rule as a profit objective and considering all of these uh, bearish divs and the fact that we were up against this high low to high trend line and previous highs, blow off top, uh, fog and bombs, though we didn't quite get up into that 4669, which is a bit of a surprise to be honest with you. Um, could you argue that this was a half decent trade location? Eh, wasn't the best. I mean, to be honest with you, I would have preferred to have seen it up into uh, 38.2s, but just the simple fact that the market couldn't get up there, that in itself was a bit of a tell. But, uh, you know, what we used to do, and this was trading with a guy named Ken Roberts, if you've ever heard of him, 
out of uh, I think he's out of I think he's out of Grants Pass, Oregon. I think he's still in Oregon. I'm not sure. Old, old, old guy now. I mean, he's really old. Anyway, um, just trade M tops and take profits at fifty percent roll. So how ironic! Market comes slamming down into the fifty percent level and stops on a dime. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right, Andre. Anyway, so not really a big surprise we stalled where we did. And then remember I said earlier, if we play connect the dots off of all of these lows, eh, what a big surprise we stopped there. Interestingly enough, with this uh, pattern, if uh, if I play connect the dots off of this doji, I mean, we could maybe start the uh, the pattern at a different level. But, in, you know, I actually started this head and shoulders there and then there, and then that was the, the starting point. When we go down to the four hour chart, you'll see the megaphone. I actually think I started it off at that level. But the point here is that uh, if we go from there to there and then draw a parallel line off of the left shoulder, I found it interesting. I think this is going to be a massive brick wall of resistance. So it actually looks like we're coming into that level right now. Notice that this is 38.2 off of this entire range. This is the 13 EMA now coming from this side. Remember we said that the uh, 30 SMA on the weekly charts is your 200 period SMA on the daily charts. So I'd actually argue now that 30 SMA now is actually major resistance. 200 SMA is support. So in essence, what we have is a moving average sandwich. This is what I used to always say. In fact, I teach it in the level... Uh, Two course right now right there's one bun there's the other bun and here we are we're just gonna bang back and forth between the two buns we're in the middle of a moving average sandwich um so you know you can see where the 13 EMA is that's sort of like the uh, if it was like a Big Mac that would be the middle uh, bun um, and that's 38.2 and also too it's a parallel line off of this uh, off of this so it's sort of a descending neckline, if you will. I kind of like that thinking, and it's also interesting how that lines up nicely with the 13 EMA. And I actually, if you want something, you know, like, hey, I never heard this before. Write this down. Um, notice how 13 EMA um, is also going to line up really nicely with the original bearish ABCD objective. And I've noticed that over my career that um, markets will often paint these A, B, C, Ds. They will overshoot them. But then what ends up happening is the market ends up oscillating around that because harmonically, this is what the market wants. And this is sort of us listening to the market's message. I think the market message right now is that it wants this harmonic level, which appears to be about 21,500. We overshot it to the downside, you know, obviously in all that FUD about the bank runs and, you know, uh, Silvergate and all that. Um, I'm getting the impression that uh, with this rally here, somebody just said something I noticed in the lounge. I don't know whether this is breaking news or not. Uh, I did hear earlier on that the Fed said that they did not want, oh, Jesus, look at this mess. They did not want to help bail out, but you officially, oh, let's see, we got to read it before the paywall. Ready? Here we go. U.S. officials wait for dead gold deposits. Whoops. At Silicon Valley Bank. <laughs> okay. So uh, I get the impression that, uh, um, actually, you know, what was really interesting was, of course, you know, these Fedsters, they're, most of the money center banks and money center, you know, power, if you will, especially like Wall Street and all that, is out of New York. So they don't really like the West Coast. But I did listen to uh, there's four young guys um, who uh, I guess they're going to be sort of the next generation's entrepreneurs. Um, one of them is that Chack Pack, Fact Dak, Jack Wax, Smack Your Dak guy. Um, um, I actually don't even know who the other three are, but, uh, I, you know, they got hundreds of thousands of views and millions of followers and obviously they're richer than stink. Um, but I heard them saying, um, that 
this SVB to the tech uh, sector, um, it is as bad as Lehman Brothers going under um, for, for Silicon Valley. So the SVB going under is as bad for Silicon Valley as Lehman Brothers going under was for Wall Street. That's how stressed out those guys were. So my hunch is that the Fedsters are, they don't, they would actually prefer that these uh, non-banks, like I said, Jerry said this himself, he would actually prefer that these non-quote-unquote money center banks go out of business. I think he would prefer to have all um, um, stable coins and anything that, that's calling itself some sort of competition to the U.S. dollar and the U.S. banking system be go bankrupt in crypto. I, I definitely could see that. Um, so uh, it's it'd be interesting to see how this plays out. And I think, frankly speaking, the Fedsters, they are more than happy to see what happened with Silvergate. If anything, that probably puts a big smile on their faces. And I wouldn't even be surprised if they even encouraged the situation a little bit. Er, 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 her, 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 nudge, nudge, wink, wink. But anyway, so uh, interesting. We've had a pretty substantial rally here, especially considering this is the daily chart. So, you know, as of, you know, this time yesterday, we were sitting down here going, okay, well, it looks like it's dead cat bouncy. I mean, I think that makes sense. Uh, the question is, where does the dead cat bounce bounce to? And I think off of this daily chart, 13 EMA, 38.2s, Previous market structure, the original ABCD objective, this parallel trend line off of this left shoulder peak, and interesting how this is actually like a high to low trend line as well. So that actually, we can even change the name of that to uh, high to low trend line. Where the hell is the high to low trend line? Actually, that would probably be a good reference. Uh, what did I do there? Yeah, there, there, there. And... Oh, so weird. Thought I had a high to low trend line. Let's try that again. Maybe I just freehanded that. Uh, there we go. Yeah, there it is there. All right. And then we'll go high to low. Boom. All right. So I think that's a pretty good uh, resistance line going forward. Something along those lines. Um, so on the daily charts, and actually interesting, they've taken most of that back. Um, you can make the argument ping pong. You know, we did actually have two pretty power, along with the 50% rule, two pretty powerful fog and bomb levels. So they kind of acted as a magnet, sort of sucked price down. 200 SMA, uh, 30 SMA on the weekly charts. Um, and at that point, you know, it was interesting. Like Wall Street actually finished Friday right on its knees. Uh, and then, you know, uh, we started to slowly start to work our way back up a bit here. So that's good to see. Uh, in fact, you know, off of the, uh, I'm not going to get into it in this public broadcast, but off of the lower time frame charts, uh, well, we'll go, you know what we'll do? We'll do the four hour chart, but I'm not going to get into the really low time frame charts here. We'll do four hour and then we'll probably just wind it up with this for the public broadcast. Okay, so four hours and actually interesting. No divs yet, but we did have Willie actually stupid there. Uh, looks like, you know, we had some serious selling volume. And, you know, it'll be interesting to see how the market acts as soon as sort of Wall Street officially opens up for business. All we're doing right now is we're monkeying around on a Sunday. Hell, the Asian markets haven't even opened up yet. Are we doing nothing more than just relieving an oversold condition? Maybe. Uh, we'll see it, what happens when Wall Street opens up, like tomorrow morning. In the short term, um, uh, I think I had said to you a few minutes ago, what I saw was it looked like um, a megaphone was playing itself out. And these are just simply trend lines, right? This is just playing connect the dots. We're now on a four-hour chart. There is that 50% level that we talked about. There is the fog and bomb level that I think was a pretty darn big uh, technical objective. Um, we uh, And so, interestingly enough, when I, I was short, I had a nice little short working here, 
um, off of this consolidation, trading this air, bear ABCD there. And uh, I normally, you know, especially if I was futures trading out a prop firm, I wouldn't have any choice and no fucking around there. Um, but normally I would just take profits at the 100%, but I even put tweets out saying things like, I'm going to give myself permission to be a little bit greedy here. Uh, um, and I'm going to shoot for, uh, the tag of that trend line, um, and, uh, some of those downside objectives. Uh, where was that? That was right. Uh, well, you can see what happened. This was coming into the level. Uh, well, so there was the bearish bot that uh, set itself up and started to work away. And I walked everybody through this step by step by step by step. So you can't say that I just pulled this out of my butt. <laughs> I mean, it was pretty obvious. But um, uh, I thought I had on here. I said somewhere that I wanted to. Okay, so, well, as you can see here. Um, this was the uh, classic uh, ABCD profit objective, and I would normally have an, what's called an AOCO order uh, working at this level, and just it would just swish, it would have been done. But here I said, um, I'm going to get a little bit of, uh, greedy, and I put my order down at the 50% level and the 2.618. You can see there was the order. Here was 100%. There is that megaphone trend line. And I was kind of like, you know, this would have been an alt ABCD if we traded down to this 1.272. So I was like, ah, you know what? I'm going to get a little greedy here. <laughs> so hey, I was lucky. Um, market did slam down into that level and I felt pretty good. And it was kind of funny because when I was putting like uh, uh, this tweet out, some somebody's like, Okay, well, let's see how good his prediction is. I was like, this is the end of the move. Don't be tracking me now. You should have been paying attention when we were up just breaking down initially. But, you know, it's here nor there. Anyway, so back to our story. Um, we came down into these levels. So we had this megaphone level. That's a pretty darn big level. You know, as megaphones go, this is actually technically a trade location. Um... We had uh, alt ABCD levels, 1.272. It's interesting, and actually on Wednesday's crypto show, we do a show uh, and our Romanian nightmare, uh, Paul, uh, he's, I, I finally got him to take the level two class, and he's referred so many people to TRI that I was like, look, at, look we'll just use your referral credits because he never took any payment for any of the referrals. You know how this... You know, use my referral code, all that crap. Well, we don't really do that at TRI. So uh, he was like, well, whatever. But I was like, look, at you're owed the money. So, you know, uh, why don't we put it towards your level two program costs and take the damn level two. Now, which uh, trend channels and trend lines happens to be one of the topics in the level two program. Now I see him drawing trend channels everywhere. <laughs> and so on Wednesday, he had this trend channel on his screen. And I was like, you know, damn, that that's pretty solid. That's good looking channel. And sure enough, look where the bottom of the channel. If you draw the channel correctly, which is you, you know, basically it's confirmed by Mark. The trend line's confirmed by market structure. But then you have to drag the trend line back to the appropriate level. And most people get the drag the trend line. The third point of trend channels, they get that wrong. So they don't actually draw trend channels correctly. I can't tell you how many times I see this on the internet. It drives you crazy. But anyway, point of the matter here is drawn correctly. Oh, what a surprise. Look where we pivoted. <laughs> There's Paul. All right, we, yeah, where's your 61.8? We got to be coming into his 61.8 because Paul, Lake Mountain Man, Paul likes his 61.8s too. <laughs> anyway, so I actually really like this channel. That was that was actually a pretty good trade location, and I even think, if I'm not mistaken, I think I even put a tweet out basically saying. Uh, yeah, uh, set up worked nicely, uh, got a little greedy on the fills, blah, 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 blah. But I even said, and I don't know where the hell I said it, I said, you know, this actually doesn't look like a terrible trade location. I don't know where the hell that is, though. Oh, I tweet way too much. Uh, yeah, here we go. 
Now the downside objectives have all basically been hit. So 50% level. God, you heard me barking about that forever. Two fog and bomb levels, right? And actually, it's really cool because I even... Uh, uh, oh, geez. Hey, I got all these damn screens, and yet I still don't have enough screens. Anyway, so there was the fog and bomb level that I'm referring to. It's off of this beautiful M top, like really good looking level. Uh, and then on the uh, the other chart that I just showed you a second ago, right, the daily, we had two fog and bomb levels there. Um, bear alt A B C D. We came into the 127s there nicely. Descending wedge. This is also a this, ironically enough, the descending wedge is actually a, a bullish uh, chart pattern, go figure. Uh, and we were below value. I mean, the interesting thing is, is that, again, Paul is learning about this in the level two class. So now he's going to be a volume profile uh, goon, too. But, you know, I used to work with a guy who basically this is his bread and butter. He always buys below value looking for a return to the mean. Uh, which would basically be right up against this 22,360 area. So, you know, I, I guess it doesn't really surprise us that the market is rallying here now, right? Uh, it's, 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 remember I said there a few minutes ago, try not to overthink this stuff. Keep it simple, stupid. Uh, because often when you overthink this stuff, you actually get yourself into a bit of trouble. So, came into a hell of a level there. And I suppose the, uh, the although I don't know whether I can do this here, but just the descending wedge would be something like that. Let's maybe do this as a big honking line there and there. And so that, ironically enough, is uh, we're probably going to bang into some resistance. There's that 38.2 that I showed you off of the daily charts. So you can see we're just doing nothing more than just rallying. This is actually why I uh, I sort of espouse, I guess. I don't know whether that's the right word. Recommend, suggest, teach that at any given point in time, you should expect 38.2 bounces. So that's exactly what I think is going on right now. Uh, interesting that we're having this rally, though. And I think the rally is coming on the fact that uh, thank you, uh, you guys are saying here in the lounge that the news is that... Um, um uh, uh the the fedsters might come out and uh help uh help the market out i do also see too somebody saying after 10 years satoshi's actually saying something let's see what we got here satoshi oh interesting no idea what this is uh <laughs> 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 All right, uh, we're not going to make a comment on that. That's almost funny. <laughs> Thank you, DMAC. <laughs> uh, anyway, so, you know, is this, I don't know whether this is breaking news. Of course, uh, you got to subscribe to uh, to Wall Street Journal to see what it was. We just saw quickly a headline there. Is that what's calling causing the Bitcoin rally? I don't know. But what I would say here is, you know, just knee jerk. This is probably what you should expect uh, going forward. Uh, it was interesting as we were getting up into this area here and we were going sideways for a bit. Uh, I actually warned people that, hey, if we uh, start emming out here and lose this uh, trend line or this moving average right here, we probably got to head right back down and test those lows again. If anything, I don't mean to be rude, but I actually don't like this. This is not what you want to see because uh, we never really did put in any bull divs here, right? Momentum actually went to new lows there. RSI momentum went to new lows. Willie did get stupidly oversold just momentarily. But uh, what I'm worried about here is this event over here. I was kind of hoping that we would get a nice push against these lows. Maybe, you know, start tomorrow morning off create those bullish divergences so our script because keep in mind this script i mean i love this script you know there's the bit the bear divs that we were barking about there earlier this is off of a four hour so there's only four confirmed bear divs but there's no bull divs here right here so because there's no bull divs here this is just nothing more than a dead cat bounce as far as i'm concerned 
So are we just doing nothing more than just relieving the oversold conditions so they can come back and hit this thing uh, as soon as Wall Street opens up tomorrow? Maybe. You know, be prepared, folks. Um, and as I said there a moment ago, we can't even really make a decision. If anything, uh, you know, and actually Colin was back on the site there uh, last week, and uh, I think through the weekend he was chit-chatting away with us. <laughs> and we just simply said that... Uh, I had asked him whether he minded me calling this Collins Dump Chaser Zone or Collins Pump Chaser Zone. He's like, nah, sure, yeah, go for it. Uh, so he kind of liked that idea and he coined the phrase, so my half of my job is to make you people famous. So I like the idea, but unfortunately this, and actually let's see if you guys can fill in the blanks here. What would we call this? We would call this a Collins, right, because Collins such an awesome dude. Collins what? Chaser zone? What is this here? Hint, hint, hint. It's probably not a buying zone. <laughs> Dump chaser zone, maybe? I don't know. So... Now, the fact that we bounced straight up into Collins 38.2, of course, our education program, we teach this as um, uh, our first stop target, and we should always expect the market to trade into this level at any given point in time. So that's now happened. I don't like the fact that it's just straight down, straight up. That's not a good sign in my opinion i would much have preferred that they just keep this market down and stay down because like i said off of the weekly price chart now right oh geez look at what they just created this massive tail we all know wicks and tails like to be eaten so there's just a big old tail sitting there that at some point we're gonna have to trade back down into that level it's fascinating you notice 13 ema like we said on the weekly charts and that 31 or 21 376 level they're right there now so i'm not quite sure how this is going to play out but uh i would prefer that they not have this uh just go straight up like this but you know i mean the market will do whatever the market wants to do so as it stands right now you know as you can see my anticipation was that they would calm down they would come down make a new low create that bullish divergence the script starts going crazy. You know, we talk about uh, three reasons for a trade in our education program. Ideally, it goes trade location. Remember, we talked about megaphones, uh, trend channels, bottoms, uh, descending wedges, uh, alt ABCDs, 50% rules, fog and bombs, blow of value. I think we got trade location. Um, we talked about then number two is usually indicator confirmation. The irony of all of this, and this is this is ironic, is that our algorithm that we built, uh, and this is going back, like I've been working on this algorithm now easily 20, 30 years. Um, and the algorithm actually had us go buy Bitcoins there uh, a week or so ago, around 21,000 and change. So into Friday, you know, we had a lot of people that just, and I don't think this is a good idea. I'm doing it as a pure experiment. But if you're brand new to trading, this is going to be way too anxious. So you're going to get absolutely freaked out uh, if you aren't a veteran at using algorithms. You have to understand that, you know, live by the sword, die by the sword. If you're going to follow an algorithm, you know, to the blindly, to the tooth, you might be sitting on fairly large losses. I watched one guy, I always tell you guys this story, this one guy running an algorithm on uh, the Z coins, went and bought one of the Z coins and paid like 3,000 Bitcoin for a Z coin because the algorithm went crazy and it just kept buying and buying and buying and buying and buying. So uh, ironically enough, actually this trade signal is actually saying that the market is in bullish divergence because you can see the algo itself actually went to new lows there back on march 4th and this latest dump that you saw on friday we actually weren't there and now 
The algo is actually sloping up on this low, which is our marketing guy who is really following this really closely. He actually only trades this algo when the algo is actually sloping up on the teal. So ironically enough, the algo has been long and it's that long for quite a while, <laughs> which is kind of ironic. So anyway, it is long. In fact, I think it bought somewhere in this area here. So it's still underwater. But anyway, uh, the point that I would just make is, uh, and if anything, this is this is a really interesting uh, debate. And half of the reason why I put the short on was because I was like, you know, that's a bearish bot. I want to short that. But the algo was long, so what do we do? <laughs> and I did both of them. It's interesting how the algo never did give us a sell signal through this, which was fascinating. So you just had to sit there and stomach it. Ironically enough, from actually an investment perspective, that was only about a 10% drop. So 10% asset drawdown. I know there's plenty of fund managers that see 10%. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, uh, slip my mind. Sharp, sharp ratios. Uh, they have they have uh, sharp ratios. If, if you have to stomach this kind of drawdown, um, ironically enough, 10% drawdown on your equity is not really that big of a deal. But anyway, that's a different conversation for a different day. What I will say is that the algo is still long, and the indicator actually is still pointing up. So how ironic. I just don't have enough from my indicators here for me to get overly bullish. If anything, you know, what you really need to see if you are a bull, is you need to see this buying candle break these highs. Because you can see, and this is what I was worried about about an hour or so ago, uh, maybe a couple hours ago. Uh, I saw lower high, lower high, lower high on the vo buying volume bars. And I was like, uh-oh, this has got trouble written all over it. <laughs> somebody's come out and like I said I, I get the feeling that that news about how the uh, central banksters and I mean it's all just such fucking crookery eh uh, but I get the impression that they said you know this SBV we better do something about it because uh, the whole damn tech industry is going to start collapsing if we don't and that's probably a big reason why uh, Bitcoin uh, had a big spike here having said that uh, way too early for me to call a bottom. Uh, I would call this nothing more even now than just a dead cat bounce. And what I'm really worried about, like I told you guys earlier, is you notice that the Fed, the market actually likes to rally into the Fed. Uh, and then on the other side of it, we have a couple examples. I mean, if we go back over time, I don't think this one shows it here. But, uh, you know, that daily chart, like I think this was a Fed announcement. And then following it, the whole damn market just collapsed. So I'm very leery about this upcoming Fed announcement window. Now, maybe if we're lucky, fingers crossed, um, there's lots of sort of anxiety in the charts, Right, that's the best way to describe it with regard to the celestial stuff. What time is it? It's noon now, eh? So I should probably wind this up here. Um, so I did listen to a few people online, uh, some guys that I respect. There's a crypto Nostradamus guy, uh, Olga. It's interesting how Olga says that uh, somebody is purposely trying to undermine her. Right now, um, I got a buddy of mine who used to be an old site member, uh, Shane, uh, who said, yep, uh, a lot of uh, stuff in the tea leaves suggesting this is going to be very, very stressful. <laughs> you know, seeing all the bank runs and all that shit, what a surprise. Uh, that's basically par for the course. Uh, if anything, are they going to use this anxiety to try and convince the right wing politicians in the U.S. government to uh, politely raise the debt ceiling? Are they using all this leverage to uh, to try and uh, um, uh, convince them that it's not in their best interest to uh, screw with the banksters because the banksters are running the show and if you don't like that, uh, uh, get the fuck out kind of thing? 
Uh, I don't know. I mean, they might. They have a history of doing that. It is interesting that, of course, you remember in March of 2000, that's when we had the, should we debate mortgaging our kids' future? Shut the rock up and give them the money. Give the banks There's all the money that they want. Just do it, whatever the hell they say. I, I will sacrifice my life to save capitalism. Oh, my God. You can't be serious. I mean, that's how, you know, absolutely insane these people get. Uh, it, it sucks how the banksters love to trigger our emotional responses. Um, and I have a funny feeling that that's what they're doing here. Uh, with regard to Bitcoin itself, what I do find fascinating is, you know, the banksters have a long history, uh, especially this jerk, long, long history of trying to label Bitcoin as a fraud. And I would love nothing more. I would love nothing more than for this jerk to be dragged down by this whole Epstein stuff and be exposed. JP Morgan itself has literally settled, if not dozens, probably hundreds of lawsuits about fraud. And I believe that, you know, first off, I believe any guy as young as this that has hair that looks like this, there's something wrong with his soul. He's sold his soul. Notice all these damn uh, fedsters and the way, you know, like, why are they all like they have no, is it collagen? I don't know what the, what the, like, look at this. What's happened to her? She looks like a ghost. I mean, that's it. does she actually dye her hair white? That's ridiculous. Normal people don't look like this. Unless, of course, they've sold their soul to the devil and they, you know, they eat babies and stuff around Jekyll Island, uh, you know, <laughs> and altars and stuff. But I would love nothing more than this jerk to be brought down uh, by this whole Epstein fiasco. That would be perfect. That would be such beautiful uh, poetic justice. Uh, but anyway, I mean, this guy has blatantly come out and called Bitcoin a fraud. I've been working in the Bitcoin space now since 2013. So that's literally 10 years. And I have never once seen Bitcoin do anything at all fraudulent. Not once. So uh, very, very suspicious the way this guy came right out one day. In public, he went on like a daytime talk show. Uh, you know, he made fun of his daughter for buying Bitcoin and stuff. Uh, so, you know, these are the people that, that you should be angry at in our society. This guy got the biggest bailout, too big to fail, all that garbage. Uh, and really, you know, these, these firms should have gone out of business in 2008, 2009, 2010. That's what should have happened. That should have been the Great Reset. But instead, now we live in this hyperinflation world where they all got free money and they all got bailed out for nothing. And it's tragic, really. And ironically enough, the only way to offset this gentleman's effect on our society is to own Bitcoin because it has basically offset the money dilution of what they've done to things like the fiat currency base. Anyway, rant, 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 rant. Blah, blah, blah. There goes Brian again. Going to get himself into trouble. And, you know, please, by all means, uh, you know, we, we really would like to uh, get this message out. And the way that we get this message out is please, you know, hit the like button. If you think there's any value to what I'm saying to you guys here, Please, you know, that that's how you sort of help us, you know, maybe think about subscribing to our channel. Maybe think about, um, uh, you know, hitting the little bell button on uh, on the uh, on the um, whatever the heck this the, the YouTube thing is. So you, you'll be notified the next time uh, one of these videos comes out, uh, even with daylight savings. That's probably screwed up a lot of people. We're not getting our regular viewers and followers here. And, um, you know, spread the word. I mean, the one good thing about what I do 
especially if you work off of price charts, is there's no bullshit in price charts. I mean, W's are W's are W's. M's are M's are M's. It's, it's not rocket science. <laughs> Ironically enough, the rocket science is how do you actually control your emotions? All right. Thank you, Gog. Gog. <laughs> do I, is it Gog or Goog? Or Gog? Is the, is the O hard? Anyway. All right. Uh, so... I'll leave the Bitcoin and crypto analysis at the four hour basis. Uh, you know, it was interesting. I'll just sort of tease you. Uh, there were site members. If we go down to the lower time frames, there were site members that were talking a little bit about bullish divergences that were coming in off of the lower time frames. This is now a one. Oh, fuck. Hey, there's Eddie. Holy Eddie. Oh, my goodness. Hey, oh, wow. Holy crap. How many? How much is nine hundred nine or nine ninety nine point nine nine rons? What is that? Uh, geez, thank you, Eddie. And I miss you. Where the hell you been? We had a cool meeting yesterday, Eddie, uh, with the crew, and they're all like, "We gotta, we gotta get moving on this, uh, this uh, spring uh, live uh, um, session." So uh, we need you back in the fold if you want to participate in that. So I'm not going to talk too much about this, and I don't uh, do this publicly, but these are the kind of charts that I'm passing out on a uh, uh, through the site. And as I had said there earlier, today I was getting a little concerned that we were kind of waffling. We got below this trend line. I was like, you know, and you can even say here, uh, right here, I said, if an M in price comes in here, oh boy, look out. And thank heavens, a really, really good application of our trend line concept so the uh, the gentleman who was asking me about trend lines last week through the DBs and stuff, perfect analogy here for you. If we had gotten an M in price on the other side of this trend line, that would have tripped up a trade signal. But notice, no M came in. In fact, they went in and put a W and woohoo, up goes price. So we've also, there's 66% of the range. Interesting, that's exactly where price stopped. So believe it or not, this bearish bot setup is still technically alive. But if we tick up through that high there, and you can also see based on this trend channel, what we're doing right now is we're just simply playing at the midpoint. But I'm not supposed to be talking about these lower time frame charts with you. So I'm going to leave that for now. Um, uh, let, well, just on the Sunday shows, let's just try and leave it at the four hours. Um, so, um all right, I think that's about it I'm going to do for the uh, market analysis part of the broadcast. Of course, if you guys have any questions, and you probably do, that are going to take me back to these charts, we can always come back to them. Okay, what time is it? It is 12.14, so we got about maybe about a half hour, 45 minutes or so. Maybe, uh, Chris, you could put like a little marker, a chapter kind of thing uh, that will move on to uh, the Q&A. And by all means, if you're sitting there, I mean, we've got about 70 people there watching the broadcast right now uh, over there on YouTube. Uh, so uh, if you have a question, you know, feel free to uh, ask. Uh, all right. Hey, Johnny, Johnny Salmon is now Johnny Chicken. What happened to you, Johnny? You're now Johnny Chicken? Uh, all right. So uh, talking a little bit, John's... Uh, you know, I got to say, this is one of the main selling features of TRI is our lounge. You know, we all try to work together to sort of, you know, we have a, a nice clear view of the market. You can see all the various different participants that we have in the lounge. Hey, there's Brian. <laughs> so uh, one of our OGs, he used to be called Johnny Salmon. Now he's called Johnny Chicken. Uh, anyway, uh, he's posting in the lounge here. Uh, really good summary of uh, of uh, an Australian who broke down the SVB banking situation. I have a funny feeling this is going to be funny, though. But uh, uh, you can see Sanjay here is reporting that the FDICs be begin to return some deposits. Uh... Yeah. Ah, interesting. So the venture capitalists right now, and you know, the sad part about it is if you're part of the venture capitalists, are you part of the 1%? There's always a fine line in there. 
But, uh, you know, clearly the, 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 the one percent is going to, you know, kind of like that SBF. I mean, that was fucking criminal what happened there. But, um, uh, you know, everybody in the Bahamas got their money out. But the people in the public, did they get their money? Mm. Yeah, well. Anyway, uh, so uh, obviously this is the soap opera du jour. And as I had said earlier, uh, the Ides of March, actually, I don't think I finished that comment, but the Ides of March is March 15th. Uh, that's supposed to be celestial, the big sort of what's going to happen day um, on these kind of charts. I put that out that this should be sort of your peak anxiety event window. Uh, so bank runs. Blah, blah, blah. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I think there's also uh, inflation numbers coming out here. Hey, if we're really lucky, and who knows, you don't know what's going to happen. Uh, maybe if we're really lucky, we actually have a situation where the feds actually uh, come out and say, you know what, we're probably done because the inflation numbers are pretty good. Blah, 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 blah. We see that we're starting to break the system. So maybe we'll cool our jets a little bit and we start a whole new rally. I don't think so, but you never know. And all we have to do as technicians is you got to follow the chalk marks. Uh, right now, chalk marks, dead cat bounce into resistance. Let's see how this plays out. And like I said, we got the Ides of March, which is supposed to be the peak anxiety event uh, coming up here on the 15th. So I don't really want to make any huge conclusions about the market until we actually get through this window. Yeah, so there it is what it is. Okay uh let's get on over let's see if there are any questions asked hey if there's no questions asked then we'll leave it at that i'll ask everybody to wish me luck with liam on the road today and we'll call it a day okay uh i don't know whether we actually did this one or not uh yeah remember we talked a lot about intel and have had have had you're here now aren't you Remember, uh, we gave you a pretty good answer. I thought I thought you felt pretty good about the way that we walked you through all that on Friday. Can you please how do you, how you draw the bottom fat trend line? Yeah, we did that. That was uh, that bottom fat trend line was actually a uh, a descending wedge. It was also a potential <clears throat> uh, inverted head and shoulders pattern, but the that fat trend line, I remember we, that was the bottom of that descending wedge that we did. Uh, it is a she, not a he. Oh, okay. So whoever asked this, it is a female, not a male. All right. Uh, you know, I mean, the irony of it all when it comes to trading is it doesn't really make a difference. <laughs> I don't care whether you're black, white, yellow, blue, green, purple, male, female, houseplant, uh, pet hamster, uh, flying eagle. It doesn't make a rat's ass difference uh, when it comes to trading. <laughs> it, You know, some of the best traders I've ever met in my life have been some fucking hard ass bitch women and they tough as nails. They'd probably come up and punch me in the nose if I said the wrong thing to them. Um, so... Awesome that you're uh, she, and I certainly hope you don't think that uh, you know you, you have, I, I'm leaning towards he's. I will say that a huge portion of our audience is he's. So uh, in fact, actually, uh, I don't know whether you're aware of she, but we do have a ladies of TRI lounge. Uh, obviously, since the uh, market top there last year. Uh, a lot of that uh, participation is, is quieted down, and a lot of the ladies that were very active in there just said, Brian, you know, you've taught me well. I'm just not going to do anything until uh, we go back into a bull. Uh, but we do have a ladies of TRI lounge if you uh, just want to hang out with the ladies. Because I do know boys can sometimes, you know, be a little bit rude. So anyway, um, having said all that, uh, I... Can you, if you are listening to me now, can you just tell me whether I actually did answer your question here uh, or whether we need to circle around uh, while I'm going through these? So, all right, number one, uh, as long as we are talking about trend lines, can you go over high to low trend lines? 
To be honest with you, I'd rather not. It is part of our level two education program. I don't really want to get into actually teaching you this stuff. Eddie! There he is. How you doing, buddy? He got, he pops in the uh, Zoom call and he's got his big uh, handsome mug uh, picture. Yeah, yeah, whatever he joins. <laughs> so he just joined and boom, there's Eddie's mug. <laughs> anyway, nice to see you, sir. Um, all I'll just simply say is, you know, just take a pivot high, take a pivot low, draw a trend line, and then just study what happens. You'd be surprised at how significant they are. Uh, maybe I'll tell you what, uh, twist my arm through the daily brief, through the private show, the after party show. Maybe we'll go through that. Uh, I don't want to do a big public lecture on that kind of stuff here. Number two. Hi, Brian. Could you share the altcoins that you uh, bought during the week, the week's bottom to use LOL on these altcoins? What is the meaning of different colors of your altcoins on trading view? Yeah. Um, so, you know, I actually put a tweet out and said, uh, over the past week, I've bought more altcoins than, um, I've, uh, than I bought probably over the past six months. Now, something like this, uh, this guy here, I went and bought sort of back in November, December. So here we are, February, March. Well, that's kind of five months, <laughs> but the point is through this whole window here, I really wasn't, I didn't buy anything. If anything, I was on the sell side. So uh, here would be a good example of one I didn't actually buy, but you can see how close it came. I've got a bid working at 78.6, Brian's favorite fib, uh, you know, bottom of the reload zone. Um, that's a good example. And on my list here, you'll notice that I've got like three or four cl colors uh, this unfortunately was back uh, from last cycle when we had the Trex account. Like, notice that these are all Trex names, and Trex basically told me to fuck off. So fuck you too, Trex. I don't really care about you assholes anymore. But basically, they just told us to walk away. And now, if anybody ever asks me about the character of uh, Bitterex Bill, I'm actually going to tell you exactly what I think. For the longest time, I didn't say anything negative about Trex. So now at least I'll speak my mind about the place. And I would strongly suggest you just avoid the place. Uh, having said that, um, these were all part of the old portfolio. So, you know, really I should. Uh, and this actually list was back. Uh, the name of this list is uh, like 2021. So actually... I think I'll probably go and create a whole brand new uh, watch list for 2023. So I wouldn't pay too much attention to anything that's Trex listed, but something like this, um, I'm long link and it has a blue uh, little uh, icon there. Blue means that I'm long. Uh, something like green is I'm interested in this name and I'd like to uh, work a bid. Obviously, this is Trex. Can't touch that crap there. Uh, I think if I'm not mistaken, um, I think I had uh, uh, Sjord looking at this on DeFi, but I'm not positive about that. So regardless of the Trex names, if we move down... Um, Trick Chico Crypto's favorite names. Uh, I am long this mist, but I think I, I think I bought this on Polo. I'm not even sure if I still have it or not. That might have been that old um, list. I remember Stake. This was another one that uh, that uh, Chico was very excited about. Um, I'm not quite sure what what his sort of take is on these these days. Obviously, they're right down at the bottom end of the range. I don't even know if these are even really real anymore or not. But I suppose uh, if he still likes uh, these kind of names, it might be worth taking a good look at them. Because look at that. Eh? I mean, talk about cheap. I just don't even know if they're even alive anymore. I haven't really done too much research into those names. Uh, XEM, this was another fun little one. Uh, wow, look at that rally uh, through the beginning of the year. I think this is a previous cycle one, though. I don't think I'm still... I might... Actually, you know, I might have some of that on the books. I can't remember. Uh, this is Adam's favorite name. Uh, and actually, I was in this one. And then on this dump, I got out. And I missed that whole damn bull market. 
So actually, that shouldn't be blue. That should be green because I do want to get go and buy it back. I've always wanted to be in this damn name, and I euchred myself out of it. Uh, but you can see there's seventy eight point sixes. How ironic! Like I dumped it on this fail right in here. So I might actually just go buy it right back exactly where I dumped it. Go figure. Um, of course, these are a couple of our TRI OGers uh, names. Uh, Frax, I think this is going to do very, very well going forward. Uh, screen, of course, there speaks for itself. Uh, actually, this is the Frax. Uh, FXS, I'm not quite sure what the name of that one is. Uh, but this is one. Uh, now, I couldn't buy this. Uh, through uh, any of the exchanges. So I had to get Sjord to uh, buy it through DeFi. So it has like that orange label. Same thing, this was um, um, Cole, I think this was his name. Uh, same sort of thing. So if you see orange, uh, it means I had to get Sjord to buy it uh, through DeFi. Um, this is one that I actually I would like to buy. I haven't stepped up and pulled the trigger yet. The only problem is I don't have an account on KuCoin. I've never gotten around to it. And if I understand correctly, there was just so many names that popped on KuCoin. I think that the American regulators finally said, crap, you know, we got to do something. And if I'm not mistaken, I think uh, Baldy McBaldhead there, uh, I'm really, I probably shouldn't make fun of his follicle challenges. But anyway, um, he, uh, he uh, came out and shit on KuCoin, if I'm not mistaken. So it wouldn't surprise me if maybe that party's coming to an end. But I would be very, very interested in picking some of this up down here if I can find a way. Matic, it's in blue. I bought it off of the bottom. Uh, ended up selling some. I took a bit of profits. It wasn't really the best trade. I would like to try and buy buy whatever I sold up top here, buy it right back down off of the bottom. But I already got a pretty big bag of this, so I'm not really in a huge hurry to add, but you can see it's blue. Uh, orange again, these are, uh, Sjord's got them on the books for TRI. Um, and actually there's some that, that we had on the books, then we took them, put them on the exchange because we were getting ready to sell. But nonetheless, uh, orange is uh, meant is a reference to Sjord. You know, here's Sjord's name. This, you know, if we get down into, uh, you know, VC reload zone, 78.6 to 88.6 kind of idea, you can see where I still have my original stink bid working off of this bottom. If we get some sort of panic dump because, you know, Mr. Baldy comes out and just says, that's it in the United States of America, crypto is illegal. Or something and we get an absolute puke out on these things i would absolutely love to be able to pick some of this up off of the bottom so that should help you there uh pink i'm not quite sure i think pink means that uh i would like to buy some but i just haven't pulled the trigger just yet i will say that's totally buyable in fact you know I'll probably even hang up uh and uh so you know what? I'm gonna put the call on hold for a minute. I gotta go do a trade here, <laughs> cause that, that to me looks totally viable. I mean, that's perfect, right? You know, this is a really good example where when stuff goes on sale, I bet you nobody's interested in buying this thing here right now. But that looks perfect. I mean, gee whiz, that looks textbook. Let's see where we are. Um. Yeah, look at that. Jesus, it's right at Brian's favorite fib, too. Jesus, son of a bitch. Maybe I think I'm going to end this call here. Well, I should just take off now. Oh, look at that level. 121. It's at 124.8. That's almost the kind of thing where it's so close that if this thing fires a three-bar fractal here, I just want to go and buy some. Damn. Look at it. It's right off of the original market structure bottom, too. So this is actually, this would be, a, and I, you know, I know Seward's got a bunch of this uh, with the portfolio that he's running for TRI. So maybe that's why I have it as pink. It's like, damn, that looks really good. But uh, I know Seward already has some. Maybe pink is like we're both going to get in on it. I don't know. BAL, if I'm not mistaken, I think this is one that I am uh, threw some bids in on. And there's 78.6. You can see how close I got to a fill on this bastard. Oh, so close. But that was totally viable there. I mean, you see, there's the reload zone. 
Uh, lit. Of course, I've been talking lots about this. I'm already long. Little old lady. If anything, I want to add uh, to this trade. This was a funny one because, you know, if, if I was a trader, uh, I should have taken profits at the uh, uh, the bot level. But I'm little old ladying this for our sort of plan to, uh, you know, take pro sell halves on doubles and reload on cars and stuff. And I mean, you tell me, has this thing got any potential to move up here at all a little bit more? I mean, this thing sh probably into the next bull is going to go take out those highs and then probably could trade to new highs. But uh, in the short term here, I did go and buy this one. And, you know, we're getting to points now. We're 78.6. Yeah, you can see I've got my bid working. So just be patient. Um, KMD, this is another one. I think Eddie likes this one. Uh, but there's 78.6. I bought this original W down here. I don't mind adding to that. That's not a bad looking trade. It's got a blue there. FTM, this is uh, working bids. Uh, so as you can see, uh, Brian's favorite fib, 78.6, original double bottom. So it's got the green icon there. Uh, EOS, this is another one. There is the original double bottom. More than happy to be long this thing. Might go and add to this trade uh, if we can get down into 78.6. is pretty close, but not quite there yet. Uh, ARPA, this is one that I did. Uh, so this is an example of one that I did actually pull the trigger on. Got to say, this is a pretty damn good looking level. This is uh, an example of... Um, uh, we used to have, a, and actually, in fact, not used to. I think we still do. In our library, we have uh, a whole bunch of different setups that I like uh, uh, to teach people to trade. Uh, so setups, uh, range, trading range, and the shark setup. So I think this is a, a shit coin from previous cycle uh, that we did. Yeah, Blitz. I don't know whether you remember that, but perfect example. 78.6, Brian's favorite fib, market structure bottom, market dips into there. You get your killer fill, and woohoo, away we go. So that's basically what this trade is. There's the original market structure bottom. There's 78.6, and look at that. It's already starting to go. So there's one. Somebody was asking. There is one that I just bought. Uh, P-O-L-S, I mean, you can see it bought half of the position right in here. More than happy uh to be sitting in that one against the original market structure i mean hopefully you see the same message over and over and over uh this one i did buy this original w i bought this quite a while ago i'll be thinking about adding to this at that brian's favorite fib here and you can see the price structure i don't think there's a huge hurry here don't don't be in a panic to load up on this but nonetheless down at the bottom in his range i've bought half of the position I'd like to buy another half down if we can go down and eat this tail and, you know, Brian's favorite fibs and all that. This is one that I recently picked up, 78.6, shark setup off of the original market structure. Hey, I'm underwater a little bit on this. I don't give a shit. That's perfectly fine as far as I'm concerned. And I'll be more than happy to add to the trade, right? If a nice big W comes in and uh, we get market structure, I'll be more than happy to add to that trade. So there's another example of one that I bought recently. Uh, this WAN, you can see there's my bid, 78.6, just waiting patiently, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, here's a couple others that I bought recently. This Loom said I wanted to be long off of this market structure, wanted to be long off of the BFF, uh, set my alerts. I was not allowed to chase that there a week or so ago. Had to wait for the market to come back down into my level. Boom. Bought. Merry Christmas. Uh, and LTO. This is another one that I bought recently. Uh, beautiful W. Weekly W. Great level. More than happy to add to this trade if it comes down against these lows. So there's another example. I think I bought the original one. I didn't buy that recently, but had I... Uh, um been trying to buy off of weekly w's i would have gotten filled there a couple days ago so you know there's the example i bought a whack of this guy bought a whack of this guy bought a whack of uh actually i even bought some of that damn doge right because uh what's his face um uh, it'd be interesting to see if he's even interested in doge anymore but same sort of logic there was a 78.6 you can see this massive weekly w you can see, actually, there's a cute little W off of 88.6. Might even be worth 
Yeah, you know, I would even say, uh, remember, I don't, these are little old lady nibbles. The, the rule is, especially for little old lady, never, ever, ever, ever go and buy more than 5% of your stake on any one uh, of these ideas. Got about 10 Gs that I'm working with for this portfolio. So that means, by definition, don't put more than 500 bucks into any name. So as a result, I think I went and bought like $150, $200 of this at the original 78.6. I had to work my bid. took forever to get the fill. All right, now we're at the 88.6, putting in a little fractal bottom there. I don't have a problem going and adding, especially since it's right against the lows. So there's two names, actually, that, uh, that actually I'm probably going to literally finish this conversation with you guys and go and do some shopping here. So, all right, eh, hopefully that answers the question. Uh, so, did do some buying on Doge, did do some buying on that NKN, did do some buying on uh, Loom, uh, and uh, there are a couple other names. I just uh, don't have them just off the top of my head. And, of course, don't want to give out all my secrets here on this free show, but uh, hopefully that gives you an idea of what I'm thinking. Uh, let's see... Where was that question duck now? Is it over here? Yeah, there we go. Uh, all right. Um, and then third question here. There is a big debate in the Muslim community that considers crypto trading haram. Harami? <laughs> uh, that's Japanese. I want to make money in crypto trading, but no, do not want to go against Allah and cause Haram. Can you please share your views if you think crypto trading is or is or is not haram? Well, before I slip my neck into the news, let's figure out what the hell haram specifically means. Haram. Forbidden. <laughs> There's not really much I can do about that. <laughs> uh, or proscribed by Islamic law. Haram is an Arabic term meaning forbidden. This term may refer to either something sacred to which access is not allowed to the people who are not in a state of purity or who are not initiated into the sacred knowledge, or in direct contrast to an evil and thus sinful action that is forbidden to be done. All right. You know, the problem with religion is, number one, of course, as soon as you start talking about religion, you're going to start triggering people right, left, and center. I suppose for the record, I if I was going to be leaning anywhere, I would be leaning that um, I believe personally that each and every one of us is as pure and as noble as Jesus Christ. The only problem with that is that what it means is you have to, at any given point in time, stop, close your eyes, and just simply ask yourself, what is the right thing to do? And when you do that, and you just quiet everything down, if it means you have to lock yourself into a cupboard and just tune everything out, well, so be it the right thing to do will come to you. The only problem is, is that nine times out of ten, the right thing to do is not what we want. And I can absolutely tell you, the right thing to do is never hookers and blow and going to Vegas and <laughs> gambling. Very, very rarely does sin and and vice actually correspond with what the right thing to do morally is so you know probably this is why 
Um, you know, Jesus says that he dies for our sins. Because we humans, by definition, are flawed. We are, we're, we're a very flawed species. In fact, you know, there's some people that believe that we are a created species and we were supposed to be nothing more than just a, a, a worker slave race. That, that's why we humans were created to begin with. Now, yeah, there's a can of worms, eh? Now, it's interesting because the prophet himself specifically said Jesus was the cleanest of all the prophets. He didn't necessarily believe that Jesus was the Son of God. And I think you can make the argument that a lot of that was twisted, especially if you believe in things like Mary Magdalene as his wife. Uh, that, that that whole sort of Son of God thing was, was a bastardization of the Roman Empire taking over the Christian religion. Uh, and making it sort of fit its needs and its desires. So, I mean, the irony of it all is what is even the true message? That, that's, that's, a, that's a can of worms unto itself. Like, I, I believe, I, and I like the idea that Jesus had a wife. And unfortunately, the Roman Catholic Church, that didn't really work very well in their narrative. Can't have the Son of God actually, uh, you know, fornicating. <laughs> So, the I guess the question here is, do you believe that you're a pure enough human being to be able to close your eyes and ask yourself what the right thing to do is and then actually do that? I don't know if you, each and every one of us, like I've actually learned that there are some humans that that skill is actually beyond them. And I've actually learned that over my, you know, because keep in mind, I've been on one hell of a roller coaster ride since my wife passed away. I probably have a very unique sort of view of the world from this. But uh, this is, this is, this isn't a question. See, the problem is, is if you're the type of person that's like, you know, I just want to be told what to do. Okay. Organized religion works really well in that regard. And, you know, I can't really control myself, Brian. You know, I love to gamble and I love the hookers and man, that cocaine. Fuck, what a rush that shit is. You know, if you're that type of person, then I can completely understand that, yeah, you need a framework to try and live your life. And if you need organized religion to give you that framework of what is the right thing to do and what's not good, I think there's a lot of value in this. The only problem is, and we all know this, this is fact, organized religion can be extremely manipulated. In fact, I was listening to uh, one um, Muslim orator, and I'm not quite sure what they're called, but he's actually saying that, you know, most of the government message, especially something like, you know, like states like Iran that have sort of, you know, really twisted the message of the Quran. He's saying that a lot of the messages that you hear in the West are actually completely contrary to what the Quran actually teaches, which is so sad. So... You know, I guess the question you have to ask yourself is, what's the context that you are talking about this, this word? Obviously, this is a very loaded word here. And you're asking me a very big, big question here. Um, I don't know what the correct answer is. What I will say is, organized religion, specifically, you know, you do this, you do that. Uh, whoa, man, I, I actually don't think that's in human's best interest. But can you actually as an individual get to the point where when asked what the right thing to do is, what's the moral thing? What's the what's the what's the thing that's going to empower people the most? Uh, can you actually answer that with a with a uh, 
and answer that if you stood in front of your maker, and this is actually the way I really like to look at all of this, is that when I die, I fully expect to have to stand in front of my maker and review my whole life. And, you know, what I tell people is that since the day my wife passed, and actually it wasn't, it was probably about six months after she passed, I've been on this really weird mission where I believe spirit has said to me that I have the opportunity to help people in this world. And what I actually teach is everything in moderation. Don't go all in. All in is the stupidest thing you can do. Don't, you know, unfortunately, you get a lot of the kids that are into the hookers and blow and Lambos and all that. And they'll say things like, well, don't sell half on a double, which is a prudent, smart money management approach. They'll say, when something doubles in price, buy more, which is all about greed. So am I being arrogant in saying that, hey, I think I know how to play this game where you play reasonably, you aren't greedy, and then if you happen to do well, you can actually use those proceeds to make a positive difference in this world. Well, I don't understand how that can be wrong. But at the same time, too, you know, anybody who's just simply like, hey, look, I just follow exactly what the rules are that these organized religions have set for me. You know, a word like this, haram, it could be interpreted 20 different ways. But me personally, if 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 you made the conscious uh, plan that, yes, I am going to participate in the market, I do understand that there is a lot of evils, but I'm going to actually use my gift of whatever it is to try and make a positive difference in this world. You know, that's an individual decision. Am I comfortable standing in front of my maker and saying, this is the path that I decided to take. No, I don't drive a Lambo. I mean, the irony of it all is that I drive the car that some guy used as a talking point to sell the public into going down a very bad, ugly, evil road. I drive a Toyota Corolla. But I do it because I bought the car for my son because I only use the car when I'm servicing my son. <laughs> and yet the irony of it all is, now if you say, well, I drive a Toyota Corolla, they go, well, that's what that SBF guy said, so obviously you're a crook. <laughs> it's like, ah, oh, you can't win. <laughs> uh, so... I don't, I don't even know if there's a, a right or wrong answer to a question like this. It's just my rhetoric. That I think that if you're honest and if you can stand in front of your maker um, and, and feel perfectly comfortable with what you have done in this world, uh, then I'm perfectly fine with you. But it means taking personal ownership. And sadly, in capitalism, I mean, you see SBF's business partner. I can't remember what the guy's name is, and really I don't even want to see his face. But before he came to crypto, he was running online poker uh, platforms and literally cheating the people that were on his platform gambling. He was cheating them. So that is not like doubly cheating. And, you know, the, the, the haram is probably geared towards, you know what? It's probably in our best interest to try and avoid guys like that, like the plague. Because that guy is going to steal your money from you. And the worst part about it is he's going to make you feel as though while he's stealing your money that he's actually doing you a favor. And really, I think that's exactly what this whole SBF shit was all about. So... That's my answer. I don't know whether it's the right answer. I don't know whether it's the wrong answer. But I'll tell you, since my wife has passed, I mean, you all know a public record. You all know this. Public records, 
I spend like three to four hours twice a week mindlessly driving my son around the lower mainland because it puts a smile on his face. He feels good about life in a really, really shitty life that he has to live. Could I do that? I mean, like middle of the week, Thursday, just leave and just get in the car and all right, Liam, where are we heading today? Are we doing country or are we doing mountains? Country, all done mountains, all done. Okay, country it is. We just drive out into the country. Could I do that if I didn't live this life? I don't think so. Right? I'd have some slave driver saying, you get back to work. You're on the clock, buddy. So is there a positive that's coming out of this? For another human being that would be just trapped in his prison cell, my son, in some sort of, you know, institutional type environment, and he wouldn't get that? Is that a positive that has come out of all of this? I think so. So that's a tough one, I'll tell you. But I think, you know, the most important thing of all of this is you have to be able to, at the end of all of this, you have to be able to stand in front of your maker and you know there are there is no line when that comes to that and you have you know the the log will be read read out you fuck this person over you fuck that person over you fuck this person over you fuck all right off to hell you go you know or something along those lines i honestly believe that and you know, I carry an immense amount of guilt, and I will until the day I die, over the fact I had an absolutely beautiful soul that was given to me to look after, and I couldn't look after her. I, I couldn't keep her on the straight and narrow. So I'll spend the rest of my life trying to make up for that failure. And it's a tough pill to swallow. So I don't know. God, Allah, Yahweh. Do you find it kind of interesting that these Western religions, you're not allowed to say the name of your God? <laughs> I watched this one guy, this Indian comic, he's making fun of the British, right? The British are like, you know, the, the, the queen is appointed by God. And the, the Indian guy is like, which God? <laughs> and he's like, God. And he's just like, well, what's your God's name? It's God. Well, you don't know your God's name? <laughs> I mean, you know. So, and to actually have the audacity to say that you actually understand what the hell this, those, this whole adventure is all about, I find that actually a little bit disturbing about organized religion. I don't think any of us really know. So whenever I talk about God, I always talk about it as in spirit the spirit of the universe, the spirit of, of Earth's life force. That's that's what God is to me. Um, and, you know, all I'm trying to do is just make a positive difference in this world. So, anyway, that's my answer to you. Um, the sad part about it, of course, is that um, I would be willing to bet most organized religion leaders in your society are going to take a very cut and dry well no the quran says uh any speculating in the market is uh, is a haram if you will so you just can't do it simple as that uh, i don't know whether i look at the world in such a black and white terms but i do understand that there's a lot of people that can't go through that process of closing your eyes asking yourself what's the right thing to do and then doing the right thing you know, SBF type people. Uh, and unfortunately, they actually ended up, end up going down a really bad, ugly road. And if anything, what I consider myself is, is I'm the yin to all the SBFs of the world's yang. And I actually believe that there has to be an equal amount of good and evil in this world at any given point in time. So anytime you hear about people like Hitler or Stalin or or SBF, I mean, I don't think we put them in the same category, or Putin or anything like that. There is, there has to be the equal amount of Mother Teresa's uh, and, uh, and noble souls uh, to offset all that evil. So anyway, that's my personal thought. So, 
All right, I think uh, there's not really much I can uh, add to that, and that seems to be the last question here. It's a pretty heavy question, so my apologies that we had to go down that heavy road. Uh, it is 1 o'clock. Um, if anything, what I would just simply say, you know, with regard to things like the market is uh, go slowly. You know, if anything, one thing that drives me crazy about uh, this uh, capitalist uh, whole thing is that they're always trying to stress you out. They're always trying to, oh, you better act now. You got to act now. You know, and that's typical sort of capitalist kind of thinking, right? Oh, you know, act now, act now. Or you're going to miss the opportunity. Never, 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 never. Go slowly. There's no hurry in any of this. You know, like I say, don't risk more than 5% of your money on any one single idea. I say, you know, work with an algorithm, some sort of if this happens and that happens and the other thing happens, then I will do something. And if the market proves my thesis wrong, then if I did take a oversized bet, then I better close things down and just sit on my hands. If you follow the algorithmic approach and you follow the strict risk management, I will never risk more than 5% of the money that I have to work with on any one single trade idea. And actually it's very difficult to lose money over the long term playing this game. Diversify, be patient, and as I said there a moment ago, if the market proves that you're wrong and you've taken more than a 5% risk on the asset or some sort of idea, then you just have to admit that you're wrong and walk away. Again, can you do that? If you don't have the actual internal fortitude to be able to do that, remember, 90 to 95% of the public cannot do this job. You're a bit of an oddity if you think you actually can do this job. So if you do think you can do this job and you can follow Brian's rules, then number one, I don't think you're going to get yourself into too much trouble that's going to make you know, religious figures upset at you for, for putting yourself into positions that are going to jeopardize your family or your loved ones. And number two, you're not going to go crazy with anxiety because you're all stressed out because you took too big of a bet and you really did the wrong thing. So there you go. As I see with Bitcoin right now, daily price chart, not really a hell of a lot to do here. I see rally into resistance and you can see it's already backing off. I see 38.2s. We probably should see a test of these lows at some point down the road. Uh, slow and steady wins the race. If I see a W in here, I'll start getting excited. Unfortunately, what I think is going to happen here is we're probably going to rally up, make a nice big M, and pfft, to back down we go. But we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Okay, everybody, I'm going to leave it at that. Um, you know, try and, you know, number one, if you felt like you got some value out of this, please hit the like button, subscribe. Help us try and get above uh, 8,000 subscribers. I think that's our next milestone. Would love to see that above that level. Uh, you know, consider if you need help and you really would like to be a professional trader. I haven't seen an education program online that's as thorough and as comprehensive as our program. And it's also incredibly, uh, uh, you know, competitively priced. In fact, it's probably too cheap. I had somebody send me a very lengthy message recently saying, Brian, you should double if not triple the price of your program and you'll get way more people involved how ironic eh? raise the price and you'll actually get more people involved <laughs> that's weird uh you know uh tri ogers we're going to do a live in-person boot camp this uh may so if you are interested uh you know get on the site it's only open to tri vets probably only going to do maybe about a dozen maybe 20 people tops uh, but if you are interested, uh, you better let us know because the, those seats are going to fill up really fast. Um, we've got, of course, uh, TRI is moving towards Discord here. So we're going to lose the rocket chat, which should make interacting a lot easier on things like cell phones and stuff. So that's a huge move forward. We will have our regular course intake, our next school term. Chris, do you have the, um, do you have the, uh, that, uh, that, um, 
I'm supposed to show uh, Chris. Are you still here? Do you have the um, the uh, the intake uh, page? Uh, what's it called? Do you see the chat here in the uh, in Zoom? Oh, there it's it is. The, yeah. Uh, awesome. Yeah. Yep. So if you want to learn a little bit more about TRI and what it is that we do, we put together this really nice page. So you can see next uh, school term uh, is going to start in about a month, month and I guess close to two months. So you know, just be ready. Uh, the good part about it is we do have a raffle, so by all means, uh, you might uh, join, you know, put your name down, email address, there's no obligation, uh, but it gets you at least on the wait list, and, you know, if you have a uh, a little lucky streak, you might just get the, the damn course for free. Uh, as well, too, uh, pretty good uh, videos, uh, everybody knows that guy. Um, here's a TRI CTO right there. And our Dutch contingent, this guy, uh, well, all the Dutch, they're awesome. Yeah, this guy's a character. I wonder where he is in the world now. Uh, but lots and lots of commentary from many, many different uh, uh, students over the years about the value that they feel that they got out of the, uh, the program. Uh, so I think it makes an excellent sales pitch for why you'd want to consider joining um, the, the program. So, Chris, are you going to put this in the uh, in the uh, description? Yep, already right. in the description. So I think I go like uh, this, right? Uh, the link is in the description down below. Um, the only thing left, I think, uh, was there anything else I was supposed to specifically say here today? Did I miss anything, Chris? Like, subscribe, ring that bell. I think you've got it all. All right. And, of course, the final thing, which I ask everybody to do, Hugs and kisses. Uh, just take a moment. It's it's remarkable how it works. It's freaky how it works. Because every time I ask you guys to do this, Liam's always in it. Just a great man. Of course, I'm going to jinx it. <laughs> but take a moment. Wish Liam and I luck. PMA for the win. I, I actually go do my real job now. <laughs> So uh, wish us luck on the road, uh, safe travels, safe adventures, and uh, and I do a good job as, uh, as a dad for uh, my son. All right, guys, all the best. Uh, have yourselves a great rest of your day. The only thing left for Brian to say at this point is bye for now.